Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how to find the locus of the midpoint of a chord that subtends a central angle of 2 theta for a given circle. Let's suppose you have a circle like this having the center at point C and there is a chord AB whose midpoint is P and this chord subtends a central angle of 2 theta at the center of course. Within the circle, we can actually change the position of this chord maintaining the same central angle and that way we can easily imagine that the position of the midpoint will also be changing. Now what are the other possible positions of this chord? Let me show you a few examples. The position of the chord could have been like this also where the central angle is still 2 theta. Similarly, we could have another position of the chord where the central angle is still 2 theta and here is another possible position of the chord where the central angle is still 2 theta. Also, I have done another possible position of the chord where the central angle is 2 theta and in fact, there could be infinite number of positions like this. Here in the diagram, I am showing just a few examples but if you can imagine, we can slowly and slowly move this chord inside the circle and there could be infinite number of positions of this chord. That means there will be infinite number of positions of the midpoint of this chord. So in that case, what would be the locus of the midpoint? How would the locus look like? Is it going to look like a straight line? Is it going to look like a curved line? Is it going to look like a circle or ellipse or parabola? How is it going to look like? Well, we are going to prove that theoretically and here I am going to show you a sample where you will realize that actually the locus of the midpoint of this chord is going to look like a circle and that circle is the yellow dotted circle that I have drawn. That circle is actually going to be the locus of the midpoint of this chord. No matter where you position the chord, as long as the chord subtends a central angle of 2 theta, its locus is going to be a circle like this, whose center also coincides with the center of the original circle. So let's see how we can prove it theoretically. If the equation of the given circle, the original circle is actually x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0, then the coordinates of the center would be negative g comma negative f and let's assume that the coordinates of the midpoint of the chord AB, the point is actually P, that's the midpoint and let's assume its coordinates are x sub 1 comma y sub 1. Next, I am going to join the points C and P with a straight line and the line CP is actually joining the midpoint of a chord from the center. That means this line will actually bisect the central angle. We have seen that in a previous theorem. If we join the midpoint of a chord with the center, then that line segment will actually bisect the central angle. In this case, the central angle was taken as 2 theta. So here, because it bisects each of those angles, angle ACP and angle BCP, P, they will be equal to theta. Now, if we assume the coordinates of the center to be h comma k, then obviously h is equal to negative g and k is equal to negative f. And also the radius of the given circle would be like this. It will be square root of g square plus f square minus c. And since p is the midpoint of a chord, the line segment cp will actually be perpendicular to ab. That also we have proved in a previous theorem. So in that case, if you think about the little triangle, which is triangle cap, that is a right triangle, where the angle CPA will be the right angle. Now what will be the cosine of theta? Well, we can say cosine of theta will be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent side is CP and the hypotenuse is actually CA. And from here, we can say then CP will be equal to CA times cosine of theta. And if you think about CA, that is nothing but the radius of the original circle. So we can say that CP will be equal to the radius of the original circle. Let's assume it is the lowercase r times cosine of theta. Up to this point, if you think about it, we know the value of r because the equation of the original circle has been provided so we definitely know the value of r and also the central angle has been provided as 2 times theta so we know the value of theta so then the value of cp is actually known that means r times cosine theta it's a known value right now let's think about the length of the line segment cp using the distance formula using the distance formula we can say cp will be equal to square root of x sub 1 minus h whole square plus y sub 1 minus k whole square now from those two equations we can say then cp will be equal to r times cosine of theta that means square root of x sub 1 minus h whole square plus y sub 1 minus k whole square is equal to r times cosine of theta and now if we square both sides of this equation we are going to get x sub 1 minus h whole square plus y sub 1 minus k whole square is equal to r times cosine of theta whole square and this is actually the equation of the locus of the midpoint of this chord 
and if we try to write a generalized form of this equation in place of x sub 1 we can write x in place of y sub 1 we can write y that will give us the general equation of the locus of the midpoint p and that equation is going to look like this x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to r times cosine of theta whole square so you can clearly see that this is the equation of a circle that has the center at the same point c as the original circle the only difference is in the radius for the original circle the radius is r but for this new circle which is actually the locus of the midpoint the radius of the new circle is actually r times cosine of theta that's the only difference otherwise the equation of this new circle looks pretty much identical to the equation of the original circle so from here can you say the locus of the midpoint is a concentric circle with radius equals r times cosine of theta again what is r r is the radius of the original circle and theta is half of the central angle subtended by this chord so theoretically also we are able to prove that the locus of the midpoint of a chord like this is nothing but a concentric circle having radius r times cosine of theta next we are going to take an example let's suppose we have an example like this that says find the locus of the midpoint of a chord that subtends a central angle of 2 pi over 3 in the circle x squared plus y squared minus 8x minus 10y plus 5 equals 0. So the equation of the original circle has been provided the value of 2 times theta has been provided we have to find out the locus of the midpoint of this chord. Let's get started with the solution. From the given equation, we have 2gx equals negative 8x and from here we can say g will be equal to negative 4. Similarly, we have 2fy equals negative 10y from the given equation, then f will be equal to negative 5 and the constant term is actually positive 5 so we should be able to calculate the radius of the original circle and that can be written as square root of g squared plus f squared minus c and if we plug in the values we can write it as square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 5 squared minus 5 which can be written as square root of 16 plus 25 minus 5 that is nothing but square root of 36 and that is equal to 6 so the radius of the original circle is actually 6 unit and what is the central angle here 2 pi over 3 so we can say 2 theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 and from here we can say theta is equal to pi over 3 so what will be the value of r times cosine of theta well let's quickly calculate r times cosine of theta can be written as 6 times cosine of pi over 3 and that will be equal to 6 times 1 half because cosine of pi over 3 which is cosine of 60 degree that is equal to 1 half and finally that is equal to just 3 so r times cosine of theta is actually 3 also let's try to interpret the value of h and k h is actually negative g so we can make a quick note here that h is actually equal to negative g and that will be equal to positive 4 and similarly k is equal to negative a and that will be equal to positive 5 and next let's try to write down the equation for the locus of the midpoint of this chord the equation is going to look like this x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to r times cosine of theta whole square and now let's plug in the values of h k and r times cosine of theta so we can write this equation as x minus 4 whole square plus y minus 5 whole square is equal to 3 square because r times cosine of theta has been calculated as 3 h is equal to 4 k is equal to 5 so the equation going to look like this and if we expand it it is going to look like this x squared minus 8 times x plus 16 plus y squared minus 10 times y plus 25 is equal to 9 and we can write it as x squared plus y squared minus 8x minus 10y plus 32 is equal to 0 and that is the equation of the locus of the midpoint of the chord for this given circle and that is our answer i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video